Okay, welcome to another presentation. I'm just going to go through some IGCC uh, exam questions based on electricity and magnetism. Okay, pause the video and read this question. Okay, it says um, figure 7.1 shows an arrangement that could be used for making an electromagnet or a permanent magnet. Uh, two bars of wire of the same size are also available, one made from iron and one made from steel. Okay, state which bar should be used to make a permanent magnet. Okay, uh, there's a key difference between iron and steel. Iron and steel are basically the same material, but steel has a small amount of carbon added to it, a very small amount of carbon added to it, which gives it uh, different properties. Uh, basically, iron is a soft type of magnet. It's very easy to magnetize, but also very easy to demagnetize. Steel is a very uh, is a harder type of magnet. It's difficult to magnetize, but also maintains its magnetism much better. So, to make a permanent magnet, steel should be used. Okay, describe how the apparatus would be used to make a permanent magnet. Okay, if you just place the piece of steel inside the coil. Um, and you could maybe you could put the cu the current on, and you could take the coil out, sorry, the steel out slowly, um, and uh, by the time it comes out, it should be magnetized. The magnetic domains within it will be aligned with the field. Since there are actually only three marks available for this question, uh, one mark for each part, so one mark for that, uh, you don't really need to write too much. Okay, so suggest one reason why the circuit contains an ammeter and a variable resistor. Okay, you could vary the current with the ammeter. Uh, obviously, if you had a very large current flowing through this um, coil, it could heat up, melt, cause a fire, could be dangerous, could damage the equipment. So, using the ammeter and the variable resistor in unison, you'd be able to control the amount of current flowing and stop damage from happening. Okay. During the making of a permanent magnet, the ammeter reads a steady current of 4 amps throughout the five seconds that the current is switched on. The voltage of the supply is 12 volts. Calculate the total circuit resistance. Okay, have a go at this now. Okay, I can see from this that I have all the things I need to use Ohm's law. V is equal to IR. I'm calculating resistance. I need to rearrange for R. Uh, divide both sides by I. Cancel out the I's and I've got R is equal to V over I. So V was 12 current was 4, gives me 3, so the answer is 3 ohms. Uh, 6 marks this question, there are 3 parts to it, 2 marks each, so you get a mark for the correct answer and the correct units, but always write the formula anyway, always show the formula you used, just in case you make a mistake in your answer, you'll still get a mark for that. Even if you don't know how to do it, just write a formula. Right. Calculate the power of the supply. Power is just voltage times current, P is equal to uh, VI or IV, whatever you like. Voltage is 12, current is 4. 12 times 4 is 48. And you can put joules per second or watts. Okay, calculate the energy supplied during the 5 seconds. Okay, well, since power is just joules per second, um, and I know how long it was running for, 5 seconds. It's five seconds worth of energy, so it's five lots of 48. Okay, so I just need to get the calculator to work that out because I'm a bit thick. Uh, five times 48 is 240. 240, and it's energy, so the units are joules. Okay, remember, six marks for all these. It's a mark for uh, the correct number, correct units, correct number, correct units. Okay, the potential difference across the variable resistor is 7 volts, and across the ammeter it is zero. Calculate the potential difference across the magnetizing coil. Okay, let's remind ourselves of what this circuit looked like. We had... Uh, oh, there was an ammeter there as well. We had this coil... There's a variable resistor here, right? And it there was 12 volts coming in, and it's telling us that the voltage drop across the variable resistor is 7 volts. Okay, 7 volts there, right? 
So what is the voltage across this? This is our unknown voltage. Okay. Basically, I know that whatever the voltage of the supply is, the voltage drops across everything else in a series circuit add up to the supply. So 7 plus something will equal 12. So I can put it like this. 7 plus my unknown, I'll just call it x for now, is equal to 12. And if I subtract 7 from both sides, I'm left with x is equal to 5. So, uh, yeah. So basically, 5 volts is my answer. Let's put it here, 5 volts is the answer. Okay, state the general principle used in making this calculation. It's actually uh, Kirchhoff's voltage law. The sum of the potential differences around any closed loop of a circuit are equal to zero. If you actually uh, look at it, uh, one side of this, although we're not told in the question which side, one side is going to be negative, one side is going to be positive. So if you take this as being a positive number, and then this is going to be positive, negative, positive, negative. So it's basically saying that 12 volts, it's what I stated here, essentially. And uh, follow through in the same way. Okay. Pause the video and read this question. Okay, state the direction of the magnetic fields between the poles of the magnet. Okay. So we've got a current, uh, a, a wire, sorry, uh, and it's got a current flowing through it going directly into the page. I know it's going directly into the page because it's got a cross in it like that. If it was coming out of the page, it would look like uh, a dot. It would look like this. Okay. State the direction of the magnetic field between the poles of the magnet from north to south. Okay. The wire is free to move. The current is switched on so that its direction is into the page, right? What we had before. State the direction of the movement of the wire. Okay, I'm going to get my left hand and I'm going to write on it with a pen. I'm going to write on my thumb. Let's see if I can draw this well enough to be understood. My forefinger, my middle finger. I'm going to write my thumb motion or M. Um, I'm going to write my finger F for field and I'm going to write on my middle finger C for current. Now I'm going to line up my middle finger with the current, line, align my my first finger with the field so it's pointing from north to south and my thumb is going to tell me the motion of the wire which would be directly downwards. Okay. Explain how you reached your answer. I used Fleming's left hand rule. Okay. This experiment is the basis of an electric motor. Describe two changes to the arrangement shown in figure 8.1 that would enable continuous rotation to take place. Right, so at the moment we've got this north-south magnet and we've got this one wire which is going to have a current flowing through it which we've just worked out would move downwards. Okay, if you wanted to have that to, to start to twist or turn, then making it into a loop would mean that one side is going to be pushed down, one side is going to be pushed up. We've got the beginnings of a twisting action. The only problem is after five seconds, this will be all twisted up, and as well, actually, this can only get to a certain point before um, it's, it can't turn in its current state. What you'd need to do is, just like you've seen before in the uh, motor, when you've studied the motor, hopefully, uh, you need a piece, a special device called a split ring commutator. I just have a different colour pen. Uh, and you have some carbon brush contacts, or you have uh, another kind of contacts here and here, allowing supply to supply a voltage. Okay, and then this can spin freely. The uh, the wires don't get tangled. It's called a split ring commutator. Okay, so that's what this question is about. It's actually asking you to start talking about an electric motor. Okay, so you put a, uh, put the wire into a loop. Use a split ring commutator commentator to supply the wire with current. This thing here is that split ring commentator. Okay. Good. Uh, if you have any questions, please post them on 